Do you still feel love for your ex-wife even after the divorce? If you do, please know that those feelings are not only normal, they are incredibly common. In fact, I would be a little bit more concerned if you said you didn't feel any love or attraction or desire for her at all than if you tell me that you do still have feelings of love. After all, you were married for how long? Even if it wasn't that long, if this is somebody that you chose to marry, somebody that you chose to spend your life with, of course, you still have strong feelings for them, even if things have gone very poorly in the last months or years. I'm Rachel Sloan. I'm a divorce coach for men, and I help my clients move on. And I can tell you from experience that you don't need to get rid of feelings of love for your ex-wife in order to move on. Loving her is not a problem in and of itself. What does become problematic for a lot of people is believing that because you love her, you're supposed to be with her. Now, this is maybe the kind of default belief most of us have about love, is that if you love someone, you're supposed to be together. Okay, and this idea is very much rooted in Disney and in fairy tales and in the movies. Right? If you love someone, you make it work. You go to the ends of the earth. Love is this incredible, rare thing that happens you know, outside of our control, and when we have it, we don't let it go. We fight for love. Turn on the radio, any kind of music, any station, you're probably going to hear that message. But when we think of love in that way, it creates a lot of problems in our lives. For instance, for you, if that's true about love, then you can't move on and still have feelings of love for your ex-wife. You're going to have to stop loving her or find a way to get back together, and both of those probably seem pretty daunting. In fact, that might be why you're watching this video. But it's more than even that. Like, think about this. If I feel love for someone, and that means we have to be together, that becomes very problematic. What if we want different things? What if they want kids and I don't? What if they want to move to Australia for an amazing career and I want to stay close to my family in Wyoming? Right? There's a lot of situations where we might not be compatible. We might not have common ground, common dreams, common goals, but we feel love for each other. Or what if I feel love for someone and they don't feel love back for me? And now the love tells me I'm supposed to be with them, but they don't want to be with me. And now I'm really in a mess. Right? When we conflate these two ideas, loving someone and being with someone, we create so many messes for ourselves. And yet this is what we're encouraged to do all of the time by every song on the radio and every Disney movie and romantic comedy that we see on TV. We have idealized love and mystified it at the same time. We've decided that love is this thing that just happens to you, that you don't really control. And once it happens, now you have this obligation. You have to make that relationship happen. You have to be with that person. What if that fairy tale story is just all backwards? What if all of it is wrong? What if love is actually something that we can choose? What if it's something that we can actively create? And what if we can love people and never be around them again? Think about this. You already do that. If there is somebody in your life who mattered to you who has passed away, think about that person. Maybe it's a parent. Maybe it's an aunt. Maybe it's a friend. When you think about that person and you revisit a happy memory, you feel love for them. We are very, very capable of loving people who are dead. We can't be with them. There's no way to be with them, but we can still feel love for them. So loving someone doesn't mean you have to be with them. You can love them even if they're not here anymore. What about this idea that love just hits us and it just happens to us? I don't think that's so true. There's an element of desire that's biological. There's pheromones. There's people that we're naturally attracted to and we have chemistry with. But a lot of love is also about our thoughts. It's the way we think about people. You just went through a divorce. I'm sure you had moments where you hated your ex-wife and you had moments where you loved her. And the only difference between those two moments is what you were thinking about her in that moment. Were you focusing on the good memories, on how much you care about her, on how amazing she is, or were you focusing on the horrible things that she was saying or doing? The difference between love and hate is just a thought. The other piece of this is that love is not something that we give to other people. It's something that we feel. If I love you, I feel that love, right? Just like if I love my aunt who passed away, I feel it. She's not feeling it. At least I don't think she is, right? She's not even here. I think of her or I think of my husband and I think loving thoughts about that person. I feel it. I feel light and warm and glowing and good. I get to feel the love that I have for other people. Now I can't offer it to them, 
right? I can offer somebody that I love my presence, my attention, my care, but I can't make them receive it. And sometimes they don't, right? Sometimes I offer it to my husband and he can't take it in. I'm sure you've had this experience going through your divorce as well, right? If you could make someone feel the love you have for them, you certainly would have done it by now. We can offer our loving thoughts, our care, our attention, and our presence to other people. The only ones that we can make feel love consistently are ourselves. So what do we know about love? Well, we know that love is largely created by how we think about a person or an object or an animal or a place. Right? We can feel love for all of those things based on what we think about them and what we focus on. So love is largely created by our thoughts. When I love someone, I feel it. They don't necessarily feel it at all, but I can consistently feel the love that I have for others. And I can love people who aren't even alive. So this whole Disney story that love is this thing that comes out of nowhere and hits you upside the head, and then once you have it, you have to be with that person. You have to go to the ends of the earth to make it work, and it's destiny. That story has a lot of holes in it, and it's a nice story. There's something very comforting and passionate about that idea that there's kind of this faded love, but there's also a lot of anxiety involved in that because we don't have any control over it. If it's something that just happens, it can hit you, but it can also leave. And how do you know when it's going to leave the other person? And now you're going to be alone and loving them, and they're not going to love you back. And maybe this is very much something you've just lived through. And even if we're not living in the anxiety of wondering if we're going to feel love and if someone else is going to feel love for us, we also have to deal with the fact that if we're going on the, on the Disney story, now we have to make it work when we love someone, even if we've become totally different people. After everything you've been through, if you stop and take a deep breath and you're really, truly honest with yourself and you look at your ex-wife, should the two of you be together right now? If we let go of all of the past history, everything that's happened up until this moment, the person that you are today, the person that she is today, if you met on the street, does it make sense for the two of you to make a life together? Now, for some of you, the answer might still be yes, but I would imagine for most of you, the answer would be no. And yet, because you feel love for her, there's a voice in the back of your head that's like, well, we're supposed to be together. We're supposed to make this work. But what if that's just the Disney programming in the back of your head? And I'm sorry, I'm picking on Disney. It's not just them, right? This love story, this idealized love is so popular throughout our entertainment industries, our society. It's a, it's a lovely story. But what if it's just that story? What if that voice in the back of your head is not the voice of truth? What if it's not even your voice? What if it's just a love story that you learned and that you've been parroting back to yourself? What if you are allowed to love your ex-wife, decide not to be with her, not to pursue reconciliation, and intentionally move forward with your life into other relationships, and you can still love her? What if loving her has nothing to do with moving on? with having another relationship, with being with somebody else, with loving somebody else. I mean, it's baked into this popular culture Disney love story is this idea that there's limited amounts of love. Right? Like if I love this person, I have to be with them and it would be wrong for me to be with somebody else while I love this person. And I realize that I'm asking you to challenge a pretty foundational belief, something you've probably carried with you since childhood about what love is and what love means. But I'd like to just invite you to try it on. What if that old Disney love story is just that? What if it's just a story about love, about one way that we could look at love or that we could choose to experience love? And what if there are other options? Because if there are, now we want to look at the consequences. When you believe the Disney version of love, what do you get? Probably a lot of heartache and a lot of confusion and feeling like things are out of your control and maybe like you'll never be happy again. But if you could let that story go, if if you could love your ex-wife and move forward with your life and love yourself and love a new partner and all of that was possible and they didn't interfere with one another, how much better would that feel? If you just let go of this belief that loving her means you're supposed to be together, what would change for you? What would feel different right now if that belief didn't exist? If those two things, loving her and being together, were not tied together in your brain, if they were separate? What would that feel like? I'd like to invite you just to try that idea on and explore it. How would it feel to separate loving her from being with her? Try it on and see where you get. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. 
If you found this video helpful, then you have to check out my free masterclass, How to Take Back Control of Your Life After Divorce. In that hour-long masterclass, I go into way more detail than I can cover on these YouTube videos about how specifically to start to heal, to stop the painful emotions, regain your confidence, and take back control of your future. I break it down into steps and give you a lot of actionable items that you can start using right now, today, to start feeling better. You'll find the link in the video description below under free masterclass how to take back control of your life after divorce. I hope to see you on the masterclass and in the next video here on YouTube. Thanks for watching.